Hello, I can't even drink two beers without getting a hangover sabitio. So today, I'm making vegetarian mandu. Okay, now, what's the difference between mandu and dumplings? The biggest difference is usually the thickness of the skin, because mandu is mostly seen as an appetizer in Korea. They have very thin skin with ridiculous amount of fillings, unless it's like king-sized mandu or mandu soup. But if you take Shanghainese dumplings, for example, they have thicker skin because Shanghainese people eat dumpling as a meal. So it makes perfect sense to have a thicker skin, which will fill you up. So what I'm trying to say is, because mandu skins are so thin, and I have never made dumplings or mandu before, the skin is too hard to make, so I shamelessly bought some from the store. And I'm trying to distract you from the fact that all the ingredients are opened and used up, and that's because I made a trial batch, to check that if this is worth uploading to YouTube. But Savits, can't you invest £10 into the video, can't you get a new ingredients? The obvious answer is no. Also, I've chosen to make vegetarian dumplings over meat dumplings, because I feel that it's really hard to find decent vegetarian dumplings. And also, maybe I don't have to eat vegetables and carbs if I just eat dumplings, and that's what balanced dice all about. To make the vegetarian dumplings, we're going to need 6 portions of sweet potato noodles or dangmyeon, a cup of silken tofu, a julienne whole zucchini or courgette, whatever you call it in your country, 30 to 40 dumpling skins, obviously homemade is the best but try to get mandu or gyoza skin because it will be thinner, but traditional dumpling skins will work too. 2 chilies, 3 chopped spring onions, 1 tablespoon of diced garlic, 3 tablespoons of soy sauce and sesame oil. Julienne the zucchini into a bowl then salt it heavily. We want to extract as much moisture as possible so leave it in the salt for 10 minutes. Minutes. Wash and dry it as much as you can and chop it into small pieces. Boil about 6 portions of sweet potato noodles. After it's done, wash it with cold water then chop it as finely as possible. Sweet potato noodles are very chewy so if you don't chop it finely, you might actually choke on it and die. Actually even worse, when you try to eat the dumplings, all the fillings will be separated from the skin because you won't be able to cut the noodles with your teeth. So that's why you chop it finely. Add the chopped noodles into a bowl and if you did have new packet of silken tofu, you can just cut off the top like this and squeeze it into a bowl. Just going to say if you're using silicon tofu normally, you should cut the silicon tofu in half so you can have two chunks. The only reason why I'm squeezing the silicon tofu like this into the filling is so the silicon tofu can work as a binder, as well as giving the dumpling egg-like texture without smelling like a boiled egg. Add your chilies, spring onions, diced garlic, soy sauce and sesame oil and mix the mixture up. You should always under season your dumplings because you're going to dip this in soy sauce. And when I'm in under season, you still have to season the dumpling to the point where it's good enough to eat by itself. Now it's the interesting part, folding the dumplings. So I have two massive problems here. One, I only have eight dumpling skins left. Two is that I didn't store them properly so it has dried out, which makes a dumpling folding a lot harder. I'm going to show you two ways to fold dumplings, but before we start, always have a water bowl next to you. We're going to use water to wet the dumpling skins so it can stick together. So first way is the easiest way, and it's pretty much impossible to mess it up. Hold your dumpling skin and apply water to the rim. Add a spoonful of filling, and if you never made dumplings before, try not to overfill it. Fold the dumpling in half by pinching the center of the dumplings together. And now simply hold it down with all your fingers. Like to be honest, this dumpling doesn't look bad, and it comes out perfectly when you fry them. Second way is the folding technique, and this requires a little bit more hands skills. Dumpling skin, wet the skin with water, put the filling in, fold the dumpling by half by pinching the center, and then you only take the far side of the skin and fold it towards the center and press it down. Usually you just have to do two folds each side, unless your dumpling skin is massive. And you do the same thing on the opposite side, but this time you can choose to fold it towards center or fold it towards the edge. I always fold it towards the center because it's easier. So you can see my dumpling skins are cracking, and biggest reason is because I left them in the fridge without covering them, so they have completely dried out. You can try to resurrect it by slowly applying water so the skin softens up, but usually it's easier to get a new batch. Once you're done folding the dumplings, we're going to shallow fry the mandu Korean style. So if you're cooking a mandu, you can easily get away with shallow frying because the skin is so thin, but for normal dumplings I recommend using fry and steam method. Add oil to the pan and heat it up. Turn the heat down to medium and fry the dumplings. Because these are veggie and ready to eat dumplings, you really only have to crispen up the skin. Just make sure at least two sides are crispened up, but I like them crispened up all three sides. Take it off the frying pan and cool it down. Overall, the dumpling tasted really good. I think it may be the best vegetarian dumplings I've tasted. Only one disappointing thing was the skin, because they were a little bit too thick. So in the future, I think I'm going to attempt to make my own dumpling skins. Thanks for watching the video, click like and subscribe if you liked the video, and if you want me to make something, leave a comment below. Well, later. Alright, one, one second of silence. Oh, that one's the basic one. You didn't get the nice one. That's a nice fold. Oh,